During the last years, I've manually packaged and counted thousands of different screws, nuts and washers. All for 3D printed parts that I sell online. So I use 3D printing, PCB design and other processes to build an automatic screw counting machine. The design is based on some fundamental principles and it is parametric, so it should work for a variety of conveyed parts. In this video series, I will go over the components and how I built them. If all goes well, the videos will end with a working modular production system. This is the main feeder unit. It separates the screws from another and once separated, they go to this redirection path to leave the orientation part fully oriented and completely constrained. This part is one of the most complicated sub-assemblies of the whole system. Attached to it is this magazine, which serves mainly two purposes. One is as a buffer and the other one is to relocate all the screws together from all the different feeders so that they can be dispensed at one location. And in cross section it has an opening uh, where the screw enters and is completely constrained all the way through to the dispenser. Attached to the magazine are two inductive proximity sensors. They look like this and have the purpose to stop or start the feeder. Once the screws start to stack up in the magazine and reach the upper proximity sensor, the feeder stops. If screws are dispensed and the screw level drops below the lower proximity sensor, the feeder starts again. This distance between the two proximity sensors is called hysteresis. Without the hysteresis, um, there would be an oscillation between on and off. The feeder would constantly turn on and off again even if there's just one screw going to below or above the inductive sensor. In order to get the right number of screws dispensed from the feeder, we have to block the magazine, like with a screwdriver, and wait till the desired number of screws um, has piled or stacked up above it. And then when we remove the screwdriver, the screws fall out. To automate it, we're going to use a component called a solenoid. Solenoids are magnetic actuators. They consist out of at least three parts. Uh, the first one is the coil, which provides the magnetic field to actuate the core. And the core is actuated uh, in this direction and then put back into its original position by this spring. And once assembled and you apply the voltage, you can see that it actuates. This is, in my opinion, the simplest setup to count and eject the screws in a controlled way. It uses two solenoids. If we hide the magazine parts, we can see that the ejector is blocked for the screws. Um, in the next step, the lower solenoid retracts. I call that the alternating approach because we are using two solenoids which are always in opposite states. In order to adjust the screw quantities, we need to adjust the distance between both solenoids. For this, I use a parametric design. That means that I can change the distance by typing in a new value. There is one major drawback with the alternating approach for me, and that is that this distance which defines the number of dispensed screws is fixed. So you can't dispense more or less screws than defined by this distance. That's fine if you want to package a thousand times the same set of six screws or eight screws or whatever. If you have a use case where you need a different amount of screws every single time, then uh, this is just not gonna work. And since the whole production system should be modular, it should work for every use case as long as that doesn't introduce too much complexity and makes for an overall worse system. If you haven't seen the movie Pentagon Wars, I think it's available for free uh, on YouTube. Uh, it's a great movie about feature creep. You could of course just take the upper solenoid and put it on a lead screw 
or a ball screw and move it up and down the magazine. But in my opinion, that would be unnecessarily complex uh, and would introduce so much mechanical complexity and also cost to the system that it wouldn't reach the goal. The two real alternatives, in my opinion, are one system that I call binary and one system that I call sensor-based. The binary approach is based on the fact that any given number of screws can be represented by an addition of many single ones. Uh, so if you would want to dispense two screws, um, you would use the two solenoids down here. And if you would want to dispense five screws, you would use the whole area between those. So solenoid two would retract and then those would fall out. So this variant would need multiple passes instead of dispensing all at once but it would still be able to uh, represent any given number of screws. The third and I think the most promising but also the most complicated variant is the sensor-based variant. This one has only one solenoid and some sort of sensor here that will detect how many screws are going through it um, and then close the solenoid just at the right time in order to stop the screws. The main challenge here is time, because the screws are going really fast and um, it's going to be really hard to stop them precisely at the right point. I am having a bit of an internal discussion with me in order what sensor to use, because I would really like to use an inductive proximity sensor for this, but I think because of the sensing area that they have, they are not precise enough to be used in this variant. I think the most appropriate sensor for this application is sort of a photoelectric barrier. So we're gonna have some sort of light source, maybe a diode laser um, or something else over here. And some sort of sensor like a photoelectric transistor or a light dependent resistor to detect the screws. This variant is the most promising because it's combining the speed of the alternating sensor uh, together with not needing that many expensive components like solenoids, but also it is the most challenging electronic-wise, because the speed at which the solenoid needs to operate is really high. However, if we want to create different sets of screws without needing to change hardware parts, even if they are just 3D printed ones like this, then the alternating approach is not possible, so we have to decide either binary or sensor-based or something completely else. I think since the sensor one is the most promising, I'm going to give this one a shot and if it doesn't work, we can still switch back to something like the binary approach or something else. To put the speed problem that I'm talking about the whole time into perspective, this is a video of 60 screws dispensing from the magazine. It takes them around 530 milliseconds. That means that on average each screw needs 8.3 milliseconds. That is really fast. For comparison, the blink of a human eye takes around 100 to 150 milliseconds. That means in the time that it takes you to blink once, 12 screws have dispensed. This might end up being a real big problem for future me because controlling the dispensing mechanism at those speeds re required is not really easy. Maybe we should slow them down a bit. I think they don't need to be that fast, even though it would be cool. If you want to see me build those prototypes, then hit the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.